guys, in this video, I'm looking at our dental workstation and common issues that people experience in clinics using their scaler, using their drill. Why do I have no pressure? Why is there no water? What's going on? When you've got a patient under anesthetic, I know it can get confusing, it can get frustrating. You just want to get that procedure done. And the last thing that you want to be dealing with is issues with your equipment. So I'm going to go through a couple of common things that happen in clinics and how to fix them really simply. So there's a couple of things that you might not know about the dental machine that's going to help you so much. And I'm going to go over those now. I'm going to start from right to left and kind of work through the each handpiece and what the issues that you might experience. First thing we're going to do is scale up the teeth and then the vet might come through and do some extractions or whatever they've got planned. So first of all, I'm going to scale the teeth with our hand scaler. So I'm going to grab this out and say this has, I've got water coming out, but I don't actually have any pressure. So it's not actually scaling as such. I'm going to look at my settings that are here. And for me on this machine, it's right at the front here. So this might be turned off or it might just be too low. I'm going to turn that dial up until I'm at a desirable kind of scaling pressure. That's for your scaler. The same thing can happen with your high speed and your low speed hand pieces as well. So when I say high speed, I mean your dental drill and low speed is your polishing, polishing head. Another really important one when you're using your ultrasonic scaler if you feel like there is no pressure there or it's just not kind of and you've checked everything you've checked the settings you've upped it and you're like, what's going on i'm just not getting a really good clean it's taking me forever to clean these teeth check that your scalar tip is tight enough i find this works probably you know 80 percent of the time it hasn't been tightened and you think when you feel it oh it's nice and tight but it's not so make sure you're tightening it maybe at the start of every day just put it in your routine you want to get a tightener like this all we do is match up the hole with this one i'm inserting it down and you can see that it kind of sits on there and then i'm just tightening it not too much but you can be pretty kind of firm with it tightening that and then removing it that almost always helps with the pressure and kind of the speed that you're cleaning the teeth as well Another one with the scaler is because <laughs> the scaler is like the most common thing that you'll use, so there are a lot of things that you can trial. The scaler tip might need replacing. This this tip is quite kind of quite pointy. Um, sometimes they get blunt and they just get worn. You know, it depending on how many dentists your vet clinic is doing, this might need replacing more often than not. So make sure that you've got like some backup scalar tips that you can swap over even if you know you've got some issues with this you can just try changing it to a new scale to see if that is the issue um, but i would try that kind of last um, check your settings and that the scalar tip is tight enough first so with the high speed one say it's i pass it to the vet they're trying to burst some teeth it's got no pressure we've got lots of water coming out but they're just struggling with these teeth they can't cut through those teeth a lot of people I find don't realize this about these machines. There are regulators for this, it's called a pressure regulator, and they're located under the machine. So they might just look like a fixture on the machine, but they are kind of tucked right at the back up in here. There's two, they're just next to each other, one's for the high speed and then one's for the low speed. So you can adjust those a little bit. Sometimes they will just kind of need a little bit of tweaking. Make sure you don't Put them up too high or too low just get them to a nice kind of setting that's appropriate for the teeth that you're drilling people forget about them because they can't directly kind of see them on the front say if the vet is drilling some teeth and our burr keeps falling out which happens it happens a lot your drill piece isn't being set or installed into the head appropriately you've got the button right on the back here which we press in to remove that head also a lot of people don't know as well so this is just kind of a blank drill piece you should always be putting a blank drill piece in this while it's just sitting say overnight or so don't have it empty and these always get lost as well so make sure you've got one of these that you keep all of your drill pieces in and just keep your blank in there at all times so to remove the head I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on the back there And to install it again, I'm just going to press on the back, install, 
and it'll fit in there quite nicely. See, I've not installed it properly just now because it can just fall out. So you need to put a little bit of, apply quite a substantial amount of pressure to make sure that fits in there. Now I've got that nice in there and snug and I'm pulling on it and it's not gonna come out at all. So making sure that you've installed it properly and it's not just kind of loose sitting. So check that in the morning when you're setting up your dental machine for your bed. <coughs> With your Profi polisher. This happens quite a lot. People put a Profi head on and they turn it on and it is just whizzing around, but it's because it hasn't been locked in place. So on this one, it's easy because there's a nice blue kind of central locking. So once I've installed my Profi head, you clip it and that holds the Profi head down in place. So I'll show you. There's a couple of nodules here that kind of line up with the Profi head. I just want to slide that down and that's sitting in there nice and snug. And then you can see that this line matches up with this little arrow. I'm just going to turn it and now it's locked in place and it's ready for polishing. Moving along to suction, making sure that you're changing, you're emptying out your suction filter. It doesn't really produce enough to be a regular, but just making sure that you're just checking it now and then. Just give it a little bit of a clean out and then reinstall it. And moving on to your three-way syringe. A lot of people don't know that you can autoclave this piece and that this piece actually does come off. If you've got it in a dog's mouth and whatnot, you know, multiple times a day, you're gonna to wanna to clean it appropriately. To remove this, syringe component all you want to do is push this down the outer rim of that and you can lift it off so you can just chuck that in like an autoclavable bag and just send that through and just sterilize that just to install this again i'm just pushing that down push insert and it just clips in nicely like that one other issue that i experienced just a minute ago that i did myself say if i picked up my polishing head i've put my foot on the pedal but the high speed one is drilling. It's because this hasn't been installed back into its handle appropriately. So making sure that's nice and snug and then this machine, this component's gonna work properly. If you've got other questions about the dental machine or any other equipment based videos that you'd like to see, make sure you put them in the comments and make sure you subscribe so you can see all the other videos that we're making.